Welcome back. This is Dan Havey with The Funnel Code, and today we're going to answer Mariah's question here, and she was wondering how did this text get to be sideways like this, and I asked the question whether it was text or if it was an image, and it turns out it is actually text, and so I found the page she was looking at there, and I took a look at it, and this is the answer down here of how they were able to turn this on its side. You could do this with any element because it's CSS, so it would affect any element. You could do it with an image or any anything like that as well. So let's just take a look at what is really in here. And I'm just going to kind of start um, taking some of this stuff out. So that was your translate X. We'll take that out. We'll take out the translate Y. And you see here it's rotate zero, uh, rotate X zero, rotate Y zero, and then rotate Z of 270 degrees. So we will take that out as well. And then while I'm here, what I'm going to do real quick is this element right here has a negative margin of 74. So what we're just going to say here, we're going to say, um, oops, not top, margin is margin top. Margin top of zero pixels. And we got to put an important tag to override it. Okay, so now we got our space here. So now let's take a look at how this transform thing works right here. And you might have seen there for a second, um, there was a little bit of a problem. What I had done is when I took out everything, I didn't leave the zero in there. We need zeros in there. Otherwise, that will, uh, it will cause an error. So what we're going to do here is, first off, let's play around with our rotate. Let me see here. Rotate X. So here's your X axis going this way. So it wants to rotate this way along the X axis. So if we put in 90 degrees, it's going to basically disappear because it's gone from being upright like this to completely going this way so it's a, just a an invisible line at that point but let's just say we want to change this to 80 it's going to yeah, 80 degrees see there it's just showing a little bit so it's tipped back most of the way but you can still see it a little bit so now we'll put in negative 80, and what you're going to see is it doesn't change anything. It doesn't seem to want to rotate towards us 80 degrees. And let's see here what would happen if we put in like 270 degrees. Let's see where that will bring us to and see if that rotates it towards us. That actually, I guess that would be the equivalent of going flat again. So let me, let's just try 260 degrees. Okay, so it appears to me you can only use positive numbers. So it's gone 260 degrees towards us, or no, 260 degrees away from us, and basically spun it all the way around and has it being now upside down. So the same thing we can do here with our rotate on our Y axis. Let's just go 90 degrees on that. So again, your Y axis is going to be up and down. So it rotated like this. It would have been like this. Now it rotated 90 degrees, so we can't see it anymore. But if we go back to 80 degrees now, it's going to start like this and then rotate mostly that way. Way. And then again, we can go like 280 degrees and it'll basically spin it all the way around. At least it should here. Um, so I think it did it. I just uh, didn't see it as it happened. But let's just do here 270 and then that again should make it disappear. So now let's take that out and then we will go with what they had originally, which was 270 degrees rotated on the z-axis. So the z-axis is basically right through the middle. So if we're rotating 270 degrees on the z-axis, it's going to spin it around this way, clockwise, around 290 degrees. And that's why it ends up standing on its end like that. If we were to go, let's just go here to 180 degrees it just flips it upside down. So we will put this back to 270 because that's where they had it. And now the next thing that they did is you're going to use your translate X and translate Y. And again, translate X would be this way. Negative numbers would be to your left, positive to the right. Same thing with Y. Negative numbers would be up and positive numbers will be down. So if we want to translate this X, let's see here. They had like 270 or something. Well, let's just put in minus 250. So it pushes it way over to the left-hand side. Negative X would be this way. And then if we go translate Y. Now, in this case here, I don't really see any reason to 
make that translation. I guess they only had eight in there to begin with. And then down here, we can take that top margin back out, pulls the text up, and it lines it up very nicely. So again, here is the code right there. So now how do we do this inside of ClickFunnels? Well, I came in here. And I put in the title, and I put in a paragraph. Now with the title here, depending on how you want it to line up, you could align it to the left, you could leave it in the center, and line it to the right. All that's going to do is basically affect, uh, once we get it in there, it's going to affect the y-axis of where we're going to put this. And so then we're going to just drop in the code that we got from the other page. And so let's just take a look at this here. I got built myself a little bookmarklet so I can easily affect this. So again, let's just start with our rotate Z. We already saw how the rotate X and Y work. So let's just rotate our Z and go 270, not 2700. Uh, but I guess what I didn't show you is where I got this from. So what we want to do is we want to come into the element itself, click on the gear right there, come down to the bottom right hand corner, and grab out our CSS ID selector. That's what tells us what element to do this to. So we put in our CSS ID selector, we put in a left curly bracket, a right curly bracket at the bottom, and then we just basically pasted in the code that we need right there, and this don't worry about for right now. So that's where we are, so we have this now rotated negative 270 degrees now let's move it over to the left and again left would be negative x so we're going to go minus 270 let's see how that is not quite far enough let's say 300 maybe more like 320 Okay, that looks good. Now we want to move it down. It's too high on the screen right now. But like I said, we can come into the element itself and we can click on the element and we can float that element to the left and so it actually brings it down like that. So we don't really even need to do anything, but we can. But now the next thing we can do is we can come in here to this element and we can give this element a negative top margin. And so we'll just come in here. It's currently at a positive 15. Let's make it a negative 15. We'll close that out so we can see what we're looking at. And I don't think it took. Okay, let's start this all over again. Let's go minus 50. Oops, not 500. Minus 50, and there we go. That's lined up pretty good, and I think that is it. So that is really it. I was going to show you a different way to really try to position it, but it's not any better than what we have right here. This is really the best way to be able to do it is just to be able to take that. And like I said, you could do this with any single element on the page. So you could have a, an image on the page and you could take that image and you could rotate it any way you want. There's different ways where it's known as a skew element where you can skew it. So it kind of goes this way. Um, you can, you can rotate them. You could spin it. You could even do it so that when you hovered over an image, that the image would rotate or spin or skew itself or in some other way warp out of shape. So there's a whole lot of things you can do with these kind of transform and translate and rotate uh, functions built right into CSS. So again, as always, if you've got any questions, feel free to reach out. Have a great day.